is the King of Glory. He is the King of Glory. Amen. 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 Here, may the Word of God be faithfully taught and God's people built up in their most holy faith. This will declare in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. When I saw that crippled child, instead of me to be intimidated, I was elated that God would do something here today. Wow, this is a good case study. Put him over there. And they put the child there. And so when I walked this way, everybody looked at the child. When I walked away, they looked at me. Hello? And I was teaching on that night on the supremacy of the name of Jesus. So if I was teaching about the supremacy of the name of Jesus, and then Jesus said, a crippled child is here. What is he intending to do if, if, if it is not practical? I taught you theory. Now he wants to show you practical. What's my business to be afraid of that? My muzzle was waxing strong in me, waiting for unction. As I was teaching about how Jesus healed the cripple, and I was walking away from the child, the unction of God came upon me, and my head vibrated to my feet, and I saw, turned and I said, rise up in the name of Jesus. From a distance like that, and the child bounced. Aha, uh -huh. rise up in the name of Jesus. He bounced again. Aha, uh -huh. said, rise up in the name of Jesus. Third time, the power of God picked the child on his shoulder, and we saw his leg dangling. It grew and expanded, hit him on the ground. The boy ran. Hallelujah. He ran. Do you know something? I wasn't shocked. I wasn't surprised, but I was amazed. <laughs> wow! I said, Jesus did it again. He did it again. He just did it again. <laughs> I'm happy to understand practically about faith. Faith is just forget about what you see and believe what you didn't see. But it's written. Fear is magnify what you see. And you will diminish, and that what you see will become bigger than you. Do you get it now? So God will use anyone and everyone if you can have faith in him. And the final thing is Jesus will answer every prayer of faith. Jesus will answer every prayer of faith. And that's John 14, 13 to 12. I will leave you with this. Today is a great day for us. When God gives a vision, and you must learn from this, a vision is something beyond your capacity. But it's not beyond God's capacity. You get what I'm saying now? When God speaks prophecy to you about what he will do for us, you cannot imagine it. Tell me how a virgin should have a child. It never happened before. No wonder Mary said, how will that happen to me? If God promised somebody a virgin, why is it me? All right? Understand this. You must magnify God and put him in his place for you to operate the faith. So we have five things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and your strength. Fear the Lord your God. Let your fear of him come from your love for him, not dread. And these two will build your relationship with God. Restore, return back to God within your power the love he has given you within his power. Treat God like a friend rather than an abstract being. Talk to him. Tell him how much you love him. Number three. 
turn to him all the time. Sometimes the arm of flesh will fail you. Sometimes people can't have the solution to your problem. But you turn to him all the time. Even if you have people praying for you, pray also for yourself. And he will speak to you. Then call upon him. Number four, seek his face. Build a life, daily life of praying and seeking him, of praying and seeking him. You know, before I came here, your brethren in London, we have, the Lord said to us, gather for 30 nights every day and just praise me. From January 1 to 30th, when we started praising him, at least for one hour we'll be singing praises and people gathered every night. Suddenly, prophetic started coming out. He didn't tell us he would do that. But of course, when you praise God, the spirit of prophet come. And God began to give directions. And people started having encounters in their dreams, visitation of angels in their dream. And the number increased and increased and increased and increased. And at the end of each praise, God will permit me to pray, to lead prayer for about 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And let me say this to you. We prayed for you also every day that we gathered. Oh, yeah. We prayed for you every day we gathered. On the 30th, it was amazing. Then the 31st was Overcomers Night, which is a monthly program, which I do. That day I said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to preach at all. You come and tell everybody what God has done. And we were there for three hours, just testimony. I haven't praised God for one hour. We were there for three hours, just testimony. We started about seven, and we were there till about two twelve, in the midnight. Nobody moved. The place was jam-packed. It was during that 30 days that God gave me these five pillars into supernatural. And each day I would speak about 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes. And by the time we got to about this, the, the, the 15 day or something like that, a lot of young people were coming to me with tears and say, I just found out that I didn't show love to God. I, I, I'm so glad that you can tell me this. And there was a lot of reunion with God. And then the rest of the 30 days, manifestations, and people got filled with the Holy Ghost. People started having encounters. They began to pray to seek God that they want to see the Lord. And things changed for them. And then we couldn't stop until first, second, third. Before I came here. Listen, therefore, your relationship with God from today shouldn't be Sunday, Sunday. God is not a God of Sunday. He's the God of every day. Every day, you build a relationship with him. You mustn't come to God as a third party. He's as close to you as he's close to me, as, as close to pastor. God doesn't have favorite. Anyone who turns to him, he turns to him. God turns back to you. So we want to make up our mind that we're going to seek God. Now, this is, this is what the angel said to me. You write this down. I'll send Pastor a few rights ups on this. The angel said to me, there are three things that God expects from his people. And he said, the first thing is loyalty. Undisrupted loyalty. All right? Be loyal to God completely. If you look at all these five pillars I'm talking about, especially the, the love for God and, and um, fear of God, those are the things that constitute loyalty. And loyalty, a great example of it, you can go back and read it, is about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, why they were to be put in the furnace. They said to the king, even if our God does not save us, we die for him. That's loyalty. That's loyalty. Number two is dedication to God. Dedication to God. And the dedication I'm talking about, dedication which interprets a devotion. If you say to God, I'm going to meet you for three days, please do it for three days. God didn't ask you to tell him what you want to do. If you decide, if that comes to your spirit, it is God speaking. 
then adhere to it. If you say to God, I'm going to be seeking you every, every, every 12 midnight, make sure you wake up every 12 midnight and do it. Be dedicated to your service. Be dedicated to God. Devotion, which is dedication or consecration, keep your, your heart and your mind from evil as much as you can. And then you get help. You know, anywhere relationship that can lead you to sin, cut it off. Cut it off. You will soon discover it's a poison and a set off from the devil. It leads you to regret. You can live without such relationship because those relationships will wreck you. Cut them off. If you don't cut them off, God will not give you divine relationship. If you cut them off and say, God, I'm, I'm out of it, then God will connect you. I would mean that. There are better human beings all over the world that God has in his control. And the third thing is commitment to service. Commitment to service. Loyalty to God. His sovereign. Undoubted loyalty. Dedication to God. All right? Which is your relationship and commitment to the service of God. What has God, what grace has God given you humanly? Serve here with it. You know, pastor doesn't do everything. We need to read the community, isn't it? Do you know what? Join politics. Christians shouldn't run away from politics, or the children of the devil will rule over us. Join politics. But do not be partisan. Am I, am I getting somewhere? Let me tell you this. In London, by default, because I'm a black man, I'm Labour Party, Democrat, by default. Who defaulted it, we don't know. We just recognize that most of us black people want to be, you know, Democrat, which is called Labour. Hmm? However, in my area, the conservative win. They have majority. So what should I do in voting? I vote for majority. I don't vote for a failure. I don't waste my vote. In my area, the people that are majority are conservative. So what do I do? I'm a friend to the head of conservative in my area. I let him know. I'm not your enemy, but I'm your oppos opposite, opposition. So that if you don't behave, I tell you you don't behave. However, I lend you my vote because you are the winner here now. If the vote changes, I start voting for you. Who's going to say you're not patriotic? That is patriotism. Are you with me now? Because my political affiliation has nothing to do with the truth. No political party is holy. Are you with me now? So in the last election in, in my country, in the UK, as I was preparing to support my Labour Party, the Lord showed me that the next prime minister will be the conservative party man. And he showed me many reasons why he should be. So I decided to communicate and write to him that, um, Mr. Next Prime Minister, you are very, very much um, welcome. The Lord had told me you will win. And then in my church, I told them in coded language because I mustn't influence people's, you know, national decision. So I never told on television that he was going to win. However, to my people three times, I told them that the man who helped us get the building permission here is going to be the next prime minister. Do you understand? Everybody say, yeah, apostle. Because when we had this building, our own building, like here, we, we are located where we have the... Uh, a labor party, we are the majority there, okay? 
So all my members who leave their vote for Labour Party, whether they are conservative or they are Labour, they vote for Labour because Labour is the winner in that place. And also we engage with them. But when we got the building, this will shock you. The whole Labour Party members in the, in the government board voted against us. Okay? That government will not permit us to use the place. So, I called the head of the Black Labour Party. It's an old man. He said, look at what the Labour Party had done to us. We are black. We voted Labour all our life. They voted against us now. And he went to the head of the Labour Party and said, I will tell all the black people to stop voting for you. Then there was a commotion. However, they still decided not to grant it. But this man who is the prime minister now, his conservative party, heard about it. He was the mayor of the whole London. And he sent his, his personal assistant to our ward to tell them that these guys, everywhere black people go to church, they have been having built, you know, um, um, uh, properties like um, warehouses, and you don't let them use it. You, you say they make too much noise. Now, they got a place that... Noise wouldn't be a problem, and you guys are not going to give them how he said to them that you must approve it. Because if the local government did not approve it, and we appeal, our appeal will go to him, who is the head of all the government. At the time, he was mayor. He was the one who did it. On the day that the, the party would meet to decide, he sent a letter to them reminding them, the head, that you must vote for them, and the head who is Labour Party absconded because they have decided to vote against us. And our own party voted against us. Hmm? So when they did that, we now had to sue our party. And then it became a, 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 a thing of the assembly, like the Senate, you know, and they were all talking about it, and you know, some black people are saying that, why should you do that to the black people? Some people are saying that, why should you do that? And there was a big fight until he, this prime minister, contacted the head of the Labour Party and said, that, what are you guys doing to the black church? You must give that thing to them. And then they said, oh, we didn't know that you knew about it. Oh, all right. And they came and they pleaded with us. If not for this prime minister, our cathedral, they even told me we would take it from you. They told me we will, we will, we will, we will, we will exercise compulsory purchase order and we will take it from me and I from you and I told them that you guys I will remove you from the world here because we vote you and we will remove you it was like that so why I'm saying this to you is this that you know we must understand this that for any one of us we must engage in politics but we mustn't let politics rule our vision we must hear God too are we aha so that you get involved with the people. Whatever be your gifts in your career, in your field, in your trade, do something with it. It doesn't matter whether you are being ruled, the majority in your area is um, Republican or majority of your area is um, uh, Democrat. It doesn't matter where you belong to. What matters is that the will of God is, is done in this borough. And you have to contribute physically. Service commitment to service. Those of you who have made it in, in life, help those in church who have not made it. If you are top working in the city and you're a top great guy, employment there, bring it to the church and let the whole members know that there is employment here before it goes out. That's good. If you're a business person and you know that you can expand your business, why don't you get some in the church who love to do business? Engage them, train them, let them do it. You have a gift, you have a grace, use it to serve God here and in the community. And do not discriminate. Don't discriminate. Do you get it now? Whatever color, creed, or religion people are, when you go out in the name of the Lord, bring them together. Let them know I'm doing this for you because of Jesus. Absolutely. I'm doing it because of Jesus. We don't have to compromise with them. But we can take our stand and say, I will never do this to you if not for Jesus. 
and we don't compromise our faith. So, understand, devotion, loyalty to God, dedication or devotion, which is consecration, and commitment to service. If you can give yourself to this, you will be, you will be very shocked. Angels will reveal themselves to you. You will see many things happen to you. You will see many people you have touched their life to help them today. In five years, in ten years time, God have placed them. They will remember you are the one who helped them. So you need to ask yourself, what am I doing in this household of faith with what I got? Shall we stand up together, please? Father, we thank you. We receive grace from you, Lord. Grace to function in everything that you have coded in us before we were sent to the earth. Those who have been struggling with success among us, I stand today as a messenger of God and say, the days of your struggle is over. A new dawn has come upon you. A dawn that grace will replace your struggle and mercy will speak on your behalf and destiny will come to fulfillment. I declare upon you a new season an era that the floodgates of heaven shall be opened unto you and the keys of David shall be put into your hands. That even as Caleb said at the age of 85, I am as strong as I was 40 years ago. You also will say, even in this season, that God will restore the strength of your young age if you are old. He will restore the vitality and the mental of your young age if you are old. And to the young, he will bring you the spirit of excellence. Success will be at your fingertips. Never again will you struggle. Provision of heaven will come for you for every vision that God has given to you. I declare upon you everything that the enemy has coded in your life to hinder you, I overthrew by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Be it sickness in your body, be it a manner of behavior that you are endemic with, or a way of thinking that works against you, everything the devil has coded in you, I rebuke in the name of Jesus and revoke their influence over your life. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. The voice of stranger, they will not follow. I wire you and connect your hearing with the heart of Jesus Christ that you will hear the voice of your maker. And you will say no to the stranger from this hour. The least of you will become a thousand and the smallest a mighty nation. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. In the Mighty flood of God that is coming upon America. You shall be wet, you shall be soaked, you shall be, you shall wallow and swim in the providence of heaven and the mighty power of the Most High as it passes through America one more time. You will not be a history by the time. The King of Heaven will count you worthy among those that will be in the front line of his manifestation. Every family that is in disarray, 
I command peace in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Restore back your early love in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rebuke the devil over your family. Rebuke the devil over your children. Rebuke the devil over your life. Rebuke the devil over your business. Rebuke the devil over your peace in the name of Jesus Christ, I say. Before the end of this month of February, the Lord will visit you. Heaven shall be made open unto you. Grace shall come for you one more time. This will be the best year you have ever lived on planet Earth. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we glorify your name. By prophet Israel was led out of Egypt. By prophet they entered Canaan. I say you enter your Canaan in this month. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we bless you. In Jesus' anointed name we have declared. Someone say amen together. Amen. Let the church of God say amen. amen. Let the church of God say amen. amen. Put your hands together for the King of Heaven. Shall we welcome Dr. Lurker.